Good evening. Uh, welcome back um, to our Philippians Bible study. We're picking up with chapter 2 in the book of Philippians today, and this promises to be an excellent study. We've came through chapter 1. We did a little intro, uh, finished up on chapter 1 yesterday, and we're picking up with chapter 2. So if you've got your Bibles, find Philippians chapter 2. While you're searching for Philippians chapter 2, I just want to kind of give you some um, background. I'm John Everett. Um, we're here today at Sugar Valley Baptist Church. And uh, glad you're here with us. Um, I hope these Bible studies are encouraging you and helping you along the way, giving you a point of devotion. Um, but if you've got your Bibles and you've already found Philippians chapter 2, I want to get into this because I want to take just a few moments, uh, no more than 10 minutes as always, um, to, to talk about this because I really like this chapter. And I, hope, I really hope that you like it as well when we get through this because this is, this is some good stuff right here. So read along with me. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation, the NLT. If you've got a different translation, follow along. Uh, compare the two. I think um, Paul uh, challenges us in the book of Romans to do as the Bereans do. And he said that when I come to them, they didn't just take my word, but they checked me out. They searched the scriptures to be sure that what I was telling them was truth. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Never take John's word. Never take... You may have a fantastic pastor. We've got a great senior pastor here at our church, and uh, I've never had um, any reason to fault him on any of his preaching or teaching, but guess what? You know the reason I don't have any reason to fault him on his teaching and preaching is because I can go to the Word of God, and I can back it up. And I challenge anyone who hears me preach or teach to do the same. If you cannot um, find, and what I'm telling you cannot be supported by the Word of God, I don't need to be saying it. Uh, if I, unless I tell you that this is my opinion, my opinion only, I don't need to be preaching it as the gospel. So, Philippians chapter 2, let's check it out. Here's what the Bible says. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? That's the first question he asks coming out of chapter 2, verse 1. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? There should be. Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Well, I hope we can say yes to all of those questions. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Wow. One mind, one purpose. Um, I think the KJV and the New King James says uh, to be you. Uh, in one accord, and I'm, I'm just going to tell you, um, when it says to be in one accord, uh, it's not talking about a Honda. He's talking about having a single mind, a single focus, a single purpose. To be happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with one another and loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Our purpose, our mind, our mission should be the salvation of souls and the discipleship of those souls. To see them grow up in Jesus and, and become Christians that reproduce themselves. You see, we, we are told from the very beginning, from Genesis, to be fruitful and multiply. And not only does that uh, go into the husband and wife relationship, but that goes directly into who we are as Christians. We are to be fruitful and multiply. We're to make more of us. Now, in saying that, I've got to ask you, does the world need more of you? Does the world need more of me? I mean, I've got to look at my life, and I've got to examine my life and see if, if my fruit, my spiritual fruit, is something that God would be pleased with reproduction. Let's move on, because he talks about that. He says in verse 3, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. He's not telling us to have a low self-esteem. He's telling us to prioritize our lives like Jesus did. Jesus uh, would stop where he was going. Uh, he'd have a mission. He'd have a direction that he's going. He would stop in the middle to minister to people. He'd be going down the road, and he would stop funeral processions and, and raise the dead. Um, he would be called away from what he was doing to... Uh, to speak a word of healing to a centurion's daughter. I mean, he put people above him. I mean, think about it. He was the God of the universe, yet he was going to die for the people that would kill him. 
And Paul speaks about that here in just a few moments in this same chapter too. But can you imagine that? That he would, he would think of himself, he would think of others passionately. And he would put those same people before himself. I think as I serve my family and as I serve my church, you see, my family is my first ministry, and, and what I do here at the church, uh, that's the ministry that God's called me into, but do I put my family first? Do I put those people that I serve, this church, this community, do I put them before me? This is what he says, verse 5, You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. I love this. I love this. I get really passionate about this because this is what he said. He said, though he was God, he did not think of it equality with God as, some, as something to cling to. He was, he was 100% God just as much as he was 100% man. But as much as he was God, he didn't think that his deity was something that he must hold on to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took off his, his royal robe. And he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. Then he appeared in human form and he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross for your sins and my sins. Because he loved us, he was going to put us before himself. Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name that is above all other names. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's good stuff. That excites my spirit. Jesus says that I'm willing to, to put off my divinity and, 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 and clothe myself in humanity and die for your sins. He put others before himself. That's your challenge today. Put others before yourself. Serve the people around you. May God bless you. See you tomorrow.